When a recipe tells you to adjust the oven rack, do you actually do it? Do you wait for the oven to fully preheat or do you just pop the food in when it feels, you know, hot enough? What about the broiler? Do you just turn it on, cross your fingers and hope for the best? You probably know you shouldn't and here's why. When an oven's turned on, its heating elements fire up. They heat the walls of the oven and the walls radiate heat into the chamber. There's a thermometer tucked in there and when the air reaches the temp you've set, the heating elements turn off and there's some sort of indicator, a light or a sound, that tells you the oven is ready to go. It's a good idea to use an oven thermometer to make sure that your oven doesn't need to be recalibrated. And keep in mind that it's normal for oven temperatures to fluctuate above and below the desired temperature. I really only worry if the temp is off by more than say 15 or 20 degrees. If you want a recipe to turn out right, Little steps like waiting for the oven to fully heat or moving a rack up or down two inches are just as essential for success as getting your mise en place right. Let's take a look at what happens when we make the mistake of skipping these steps. All of our recipes that require an oven contain the phrase adjust oven rack to X position and heat oven to X degrees. Now we phrase it like this because it's so much easier to move that rack when it's cool and that rack position, it's gonna determine how quickly your food browns from top to bottom. Let's look at some pizzas to see exactly how much of a difference that location makes. I'm making Andrew Janjigian's thin crust pizza and his recipe calls for setting that oven rack four to five inches from the broiler element. Then a pizza stone goes on top and the oven is heated to 500 degrees. Now once that whole setup is hot, I'll slip a pizza on there and it's gonna cook until that cheese is bubbly and begins to brown. If I had used, say, the middle rack, what I'd find is that the crust is gonna be totally overcooked before that cheese was right. By setting that rack up high, we're taking advantage of the heat being radiated down by the ceiling. The closer this pizza is to that ceiling, the more heat the top of the pie sees, and that's really important for this style of pizza. It's on a stone, and that stone cooks the dough really quickly. We don't want to be waiting on the cheese. Okay, enough talk. Time for pizza. This cheese is nice and melty. I love the little bits of browning, and look at that crust. Gorgeous, right? Hmm. Now, of course, there are other styles of pizza that don't require a stone. I developed a recipe for a cast iron pan pizza and it's got a really thick crust. I want the oven rack at the very bottom so that the heat from the oven floor helps the dough rise and cook. But just as critically, that far down, the cheese won't burn before the crust is done. When it comes to how food heats from side to side, recipes tend to assume that you know that the food should be centered on the rack. This lets the walls of the oven heat the food evenly. Now, if you've got, say, two cake pans, you wanna make sure you switch and rotate them halfway through baking. Let's move on to the next half of that phrase, heat oven to X degrees. Most ovens take about 15 minutes to heat up, and that 15 minutes, it can feel like forever. It is so tempting to sneak that food in early. Here's a quick demo to see what happens when we don't wait for that oven to fully preheat. I've got two ovens, and one of them is fully preheated. The other, it's still heating up. Let's toast some almonds for the same amount of time and see what happens. After seven minutes, these look great. These, not so much. Electric or dual fuel ovens have heating elements on the top and bottom. When you turn on the oven, both elements heat up until the oven reaches the set temp. Then the top element shuts off while the bottom one cycles on and off to maintain the oven temp. It's only at this stage that the oven is fully heated and ready to use. Putting food in before the oven gets to the let's maintain this temp portion of its cycle will make the food see way too much heat from the top. If you're baking a cake, it'll cook unevenly. If you're toasting nuts, they'll probably burn. And for those of you who have gas ovens where there isn't an element up top that turns on, it's still important to let your oven heat fully. If you get food in too soon, you might not see charring, but that doesn't mean your food is cooking properly. Your oven isn't hot enough, and if you're making, say, cookies, you'll find that the dough spreads too much because the cookies haven't set up fast enough. Cakes and breads may not get hot enough to rise properly. Meats and vegetables won't cook in the time ranges that the recipe provides. Why deal with bad food when you can just wait a few minutes? All it takes to avoid these mistakes is a little planning and some patience. Now, while we're chatting about how ovens work, let's talk about two other oven components, broilers and fans. 
bake setting is the one we use the most often, but broil and convection are really useful too. You can think of this flashlight as one tiny portion of your broiler. When your food is up close to the broiler, it's gonna see intense concentrated heat in a really well-defined area. Any food outside of this little circle, it's not getting much heat. But as you put more distance between the food and your broiler, that heat becomes more diffuse and uniform, which is great for even cooking. I developed a recipe for broiled zucchini with garlicky yogurt. And in that recipe, I was after a lot of different flavors and textures. There are two things I do to make sure that the zucchini doesn't cook up perfectly evenly. First, rather than slicing the zucchini, I smash it and break it into large, uneven pieces. Second, I set the rack a tiny bit closer to the broiler than you might expect. This way, some of the zucchini bits get charred, some will just cook through, and some will be fully cooked and tender. After it comes out of the oven, I chop up the large pieces and serve it on top of a creamy dressing. The thing I love about this salad is it really shows off just how flavorful zucchini can be. There are the large pieces like this one or this guy tucked back here, and they're just al dente. They're clean and melony, just cooked through enough so that they're juicy. But my favorite pieces are actually the smaller ones that have a little bit of char on them. That char kind of plays nicely with the creaminess of the dressing. And the zucchini is so much sweeter and more flavorful than you would expect. I love this salad side, whatever. As for convection, not everyone has a convection oven, but if you do, here's what you need to know about what that fan does and how to use it. Manufacturers will tell you that with that convection setting on, you can bake on multiple racks without having to switch the pans or rotate them, that you get better browning and that food cooks through faster. They're basing this claim on the fact that the fan keeps the air in the oven constantly circulating, which keeps the heat even and helps dry out the surface of the food. I tested all of these claims, and here are the takeaways. You can bake multiple pans of cakes or cookies, but they don't turn out exactly the same as when you're using a still oven because they're heating up differently. You can get better browning when roasting, but how much better it'll be will really depend on the size and the shape of your roast. Convection settings do speed up cooking, but how much time you save depends on the recipe. Cookies will only go about one minute faster, while a whole chicken will be done maybe 10 minutes sooner. If you want to use convection, it's a good idea to reduce the temperature by 25 degrees and to keep an eye on the food. And remember, a fan's effectiveness is recipe and food specific. Take the time to jot down the temp you used, how long it took, and whether you like the results. Then the next time you make that dish, you'll have the information you need to make the appropriate adjustments. Next time you turn on your oven, remember these three things. One, whether you're baking, roasting, or broiling, take the time to adjust the oven rack and center your food on that rack. Two, let your oven fully heat before you put the food in there. Three, if you're experimenting with convection, reduce the oven temperature and take notes. All right, be honest. When a recipe tells you to move an oven rack, do you do it? How many times have you put food into the oven a little too soon? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to our channel. You can find more great recipes and techniques at cooksillustrated.com.